Hello, my name is Gandam Fanikumar. I am a faculty member with the Department of Metallurgical and Materials Engineering, IIT Madras. Today we will be discussing about the topic heat removal as part of the NPTEL online course on analysis and modeling of welding. Why is heat removal very important in the topic of uh, welding? The reason is as follows. The two parts that have to be joined will be usually at uh, room temperature or maybe sometimes at uh, a higher temperature and then after the welding process is completed then we want a single piece with the joint which is again at room temperature so that it can be deployed in an application which means that we have to take away all the heat that we have given to the two parts uh, through the heat source and sometimes more than that. The reason why it is more than what we have given is because sometimes we may have a preheat. For example, in super alloy welding at elevated temperature kind of processes, we have situations where the preheat can be quite significant and all this heat must be taken away from the weldment and which means that we are going to take away this heat from the system into the surroundings. So, we just define what is the system and surroundings now. The schematic there uh, shows you uh, a typical setup about a TIG and we have various parts that are uh, shown here and the ones which are in red are the ones which we refer to as the system that is basically the weldment, the plates that are being joined they are our system and everything else is in the surroundings. So, there may be a lot of aspects uh, that to be uh, looked at in the power supply, uh, maybe also about the gas supply or uh, water cooling supply etcetera, but these do not constitute usually what is known as welding research and we will be focusing on the weldment. So, sometimes there are alternative terminologies also that are used. Uh, system is also referred to as domain because that is the uh, part which we are going to focus our attention to and then the boundary is also sometimes referred to for the surroundings because of the notation that boundary conditions are going to be applied about the domain. So, the reason why we have to pay attention to uh, the heat sources and heat removal is as follows. Uh, let us have a look at the heat source at a very popular one uh, uh, something like a Gaussian which is uh, shown here and this Gaussian heat source is going to be moving along a path to create the weld. So, I have shown you a schematic here with a star indicating the location at which we are going to inspect how the temperature would vary and as the heat source is uh, going past this point the temperature at that particular location will be increasing as the heat source is coming near and it will be uh, reaching a peak temperature when the heat source is right at the location and then it will be falling down towards uh, the ambient temperature when the heat source is going to move away. So, this uh, rise and fall in the temperature is going to be uh, very important in understanding what changes will be happening in the base material and how fast the temperature will be rising and how fast it can be brought back to ambient temperature depends upon how quickly we are able to remove the heat. And uh, the slope of these uh, uh, upward and downward curves in the thermal profile uh, determined by the uh, heat removal process, uh, faster the heat removal uh, higher is the slope and the slopes will then be translated to uh, the amount of time that is spent in different regimes at the particular location. For example, we have seen some horizontal lines in the schematic, the time that is spent above the melting point is uh, how much time the uh, location is in liquid state and uh, longer the uh, duration the more is perhaps the mixing in the uh, liquid zone and there is a temperature uh, indicated as solvers. Uh, above this temperature some precipitates if it is applicable for the material we are looking at will be dissolved and the longer we uh, spend time uh, more will be the dissolution of precipitates. So, some of these uh, things will be discussed in detail later on once we have modeled the thermal processes completely, but it is very evident now that the slope of the thermal profile uh, is important, it is going to play a role in the properties of the material and it is determined by the heat removal process. So, we must now look at the heat removal processes little more closely. Uh, we do have uh, heat removal process uh, in the weldment mainly by conduction process that is the rest of the material uh, away from the weldment uh, is going to act as a heat sink to remove the heat and uh, that is done by the conduction process. So, that is going to be covered in the thermal modeling of the weldment. So, we will not be looking at it now in this particular lecture and we also have heat removal uh, through the gas nozzles or gas jets etcetera. So, these are uh, basically heat sinks and as we have discussed in the previous lecture uh, 
heat sinks will be uh, regarded as heat sources with uh, just a negative sign uh, for the amount of uh, heat flux and therefore, uh, we will also not be taking up uh, those things in this particular lecture. So, what we are going to look at are what will be covering as boundary conditions. So, so basically the convection uh, boundary condition when the heat is removed by either a gas or an ambient air that is flowing past the weldment and then uh, there is a contact that the weldment will make with the uh, table and uh, th those contact points will be also responsible for heat removal. And then we also have sometimes a water cooled copper backup plate to remove heat more efficiently from the bottom of the weld plate. So, those things also come under the uh, convective heat loss uh, regime uh, in the boundary conditions. And obviously, uh, on the surface of the weldment where the temperatures are very high, heat is going to be lost also through radiation and that is also going to come under the boundary conditions. So, here I am showing you a schematic uh, to just also indicate uh, the uh, separation of uh, different uh, planes uh, that is used for our analysis. So, on the top surface we have the uh, heat source that is moving in one direction and uh, usually this will be in a situation where the welding is done uh, in uh, the uh, flat position. The uh, vertically going downwards arrow shows the gravity direction and we have uh, in this particular schematic side walls. Uh, which will be exposed to ambient air and we will be losing heat by convection. And then there is a bottom surface which will be in contact with the table on which the welding uh, plate is going to be kept. And uh, there are geometries which are very complicated in the real industry uh, where we may have uh, many, many such planes uh, that will be existing and multiple welds may be performed simultaneously. So, we must pay attention to basically different phases in the three categories, those phases that are exposed to the heat source. So, the situation will be analogous to the top surface and then those surfaces where the heat loss is going to take place and that is analogous to the side walls we are talking about and then those faces which are going to be in contact uh, with uh, some uh, support system and uh, in our case it is the bottom surface. So, by looking at the, these three situations we will be able to understand uh, how to handle the boundary conditions in any given welding geometry. And sometimes we may not take up the actual uh, plates uh, dimensions for the welding analysis. The reason being that the actual plate may be very large, whereas uh, for our analysis we may want to limit it to only a small region around the weld pool. Uh, very often the temperature drop away from the weld pool is quite fast, which means that uh, as you go uh, to about uh, 3 or 4 times the width of the weld pool, then the temperature would have already reached the ambient temperature and it would not have been heated much at all. So, this would mean that uh, we do not need to consider the entire uh, actual plate for the analysis and in such situations we also need to understand whether the boundary conditions require a change. As you can understand uh, if we choose a domain size that is smaller than the actual size then the boundary conditions for the side walls need not be the uh, heat transfer uh, through convection mode, but it can be a very simple boundary condition such as a constant temperature at all the walls and this may be realistic for many situations where the uh, domain is much smaller than the actual size. And we also need to always verify before we apply such conditions how far are the actual uh, walls of the plate uh, from the domain that we have chosen and how far is the weld heat source uh, from the actual walls so that the wall effects are not playing a role. And uh, we may sometimes simplify the problem by analyzing the weldment uh, looking at the heat uh, loss mechanisms. So, here I have shown you a, a trend of the temperature rise uh, at a given location. So, what normally uh, is observed is that around 700 degrees centigrade we have a uh, shift on the domination of which process will be uh, removing the heat. So, radiation uh, is seen to be dominating the heat removal process at temperatures significantly above 700 degrees centigrade and uh, at lower temperatures it is the convection uh, that plays a role in the removal of the heat. And uh, that means that uh, we need to pay attention to the temperatures that are achieved in the actual weldment looking at the actual material that we are going to join and then see whether we can simplify the process by neglecting one of the two heat removal processes if applicable. We must also note that in electron beam welding we do not have uh, any uh, gas medium in the chamber which means that convection dominated heat loss is totally absent and we have all the heat loss primarily by the radiation uh, even at lower temperatures which will not be very effective. 
And let us just recall uh, the Fourier heat conduction here because it is applicable for all the welding situations in the industrial uh, environment. Uh, what happens at the boundary of the domain uh, is that the uh, heat removal uh, should be balanced across the interface, which means that the uh, heat loss into the weldment through the uh, conduction process must be balanced by the uh, heat flux that is uh, taken away from the uh, interface into the surroundings. And we have an equation here J equals minus K dou T by dou X at the interface location that is applicable uh, at the boundaries. And uh, this also means that uh, the moment we know what is the expression that we can use for the heat flux J, then we can estimate how the uh, temperature changes will be happening inside the body and vice versa. Uh, here the quantities that I have listed are as follows, J is the heat uh, flux at the uh, interface which is given as uh, watt per meter square and then K is the thermal conductivity, uh, T is temperature and X is the distance away from the interface into the base metal and uh, I is the interface location. Uh, we must uh, note that K here refers to the thermal conductivity of the base material. Uh, which is uh, the solid uh, most of the time at the interface. And as long as we are able to uh, find an expression for J, then we can say that our heat removal process is more or less understood at all the walls. So, there are uh, two major mechanisms that we have uh, looked at uh, radiation and convection. So, we will go through them one after other. So, the radiation uh, heat loss is uh, going to follow the expression that uh, I have listed here uh, J equals uh, sigma epsilon uh, into T raise power of 4 minus T infinity raise power of 4. So, here T is the temperature of at the surface of the uh, weld plate uh, which normally will not be uh, very high and the side walls and at the bottom wall, but on the top wall the peak temperatures in the weld pool may reach uh, several uh, uh, hundreds of Kelvin above the melting point. So, the T will be significantly higher than the ambient temperature. T infinity is a far field temperature. In the case of welding what happens is that uh, most of the space around the weldment uh, is uh, occupied by objects that can absorb the radiation and they are all usually at the ambient temperature. So, T infinity is nothing but the uh, room temperature in most of the situations. And uh, here we have neglected the view factor, the reason being that again in welding most of the time all the radiation that is coming out of the top surface of the uh, weld pool uh, will be absorbed by uh, material that is uh, placed all around and therefore, the uh, view factor can be taken as unity. The values of the Stefan Bess Boltzmann constant is uh, given here. Uh, emissivity is a constant and uh, usually uh, it will be a small fraction and it depends upon the surface condition. Uh, though the surface uh, condition can be modified by coatings, uh, on the surface of the weld pool normally these coatings will be uh, uh, disturbed and uh, removed because of the fluid flow uh, in the melt pool and therefore, we may have to look up the emissivity value applicable for the temperatures the melt pool is going to experience and then use that in the expression that I have given here. Again here T is the temperature of the surface. And sometimes in some uh, software or in your own programs, it may be possible that the uh, fourth power law may not be uh, amenable for uh, implementation. And in such situations, uh, sometimes people do linearize the radiation heat loss. It is not uh, really the correct thing to do, but then it is at least possible to uh, linearize it and use it when the temperature changes are not happening too fast. So, I have here shown you how to linearize that and showing you that we can for example, imagine the radiative heat transfer also as uh, analogous to the uh, convective heat loss except that the coefficient in front of T minus T infinity will be a very strong function of the temperature of the uh, surface. The convective heat transfer uh, is going to follow the Newton's law here where we have written J is equal to H into T minus uh, T infinity and uh, here H is the uh, uh, heat transfer coefficient and J is the heat flux that is taken away by the convective heat transfer. And uh, this uh, H is what we need to determine uh, so that uh, we will be able to understand how the heat uh, removal process is taking place. Uh, unfortunately, H is not just a material property uh, unlike K. So, thermal conductivity is a material property, but uh, heat transfer coefficient H is not a material property. It depends upon both the material as well as the uh, medium that is uh, removing the heat, uh, the uh, velocities at which it is being removed, the geometries and so on. So, which means that we need a 
method by which we can determine H, so that we can have a grip on the heat flux that is removed from the uh, weld mantle. And what are the ways to know uh, more about H? Uh, we can uh, uh, come to that in a moment. Uh, I want to also tell you that uh, the concept of heat transfer coefficient is also applicable for situations where you have a contact resistance. What I mean by contact resistance is as follows. We may place for example, the uh, materials to be joined on the surface of a table. However, every object engineering object will surely have a roughness and when you have uh, two rough surfaces that are coming in contact, then as you can see in the inset zoomed out, uh, the contact is not perfect all through which means that the conduction that is going from uh, base material to the table is not happening at every location across the length, which means that there is what is called as a contact resistance. If uh, you want to model uh, this contact resistance, the best uh, way to go about is to assign uh, H uh, a uh, heat transfer coefficient value to the contact resistance also and then use it along with the rest of the walls. And one can also estimate the contact resistance uh, through the same methods that we are going to do for the heat transfer coefficient uh, in a moment. We can actually avoid this kind of a contact resistance by applying conducting pastes uh, that will make the base material join with the table very closely. Uh, these are sometimes uh, applicable uh, when the objects are small and the uh, weld joint uh, is very critical and at the small thicknesses. However, uh, in situations on engineering applications, uh, such uh, uh, possibilities may not exist uh, and we must keep that in mind while analyzing or modeling the welding at the bottom surface where the contact is going to take place. And heat transfer coefficient is generally not available uh, as a raw parameter, it is uh, converted to a non-dimensional number and then uh, made available as a correlation. So, here is uh, how I am uh, showing you uh, the way it is converted to a non-dimensional number. The number goes by the name Nusselt number, Nu is the symbol that is used for the non-dimensional number. The quantity on the right hand side H x by k. Uh, converts the units of H into the non-dimensional uh, method by going to Nu and uh, X is the characteristic uh, distance uh, and this can be for example, the length of the plate uh, in the direction of the flow of the gas which is removing the heat through convective mode. It can be for example, the diameter of the tube through which the gas is flowing etcetera. And K here again please pay attention, it is the thermal conductivity of the gas and it is not the thermal conductivity of the base metal. The reason being that we are non-dimensionalizing heat transfer coefficient applicable for the gas and therefore, K must be of the fluid. And the quantities that are appearing on the right hand side of this expression may be similar to biot number also, but biot number is not what we are looking at, we are looking at Nusselt number. And there are uh, two um, ways of uh, writing a correlation of Nusselt number uh, depending upon the situation that is uh, active uh, in the actual convective heat transfer and I have shown you here. Uh, take the example uh, when we have uh, the heat removal through gas jets, uh, the flow through nozzles and fans that are uh, driving the air or the gas on the top of the weldment to remove the heat. So, in these situations the velocity of the gas medium which is removing the heat is induced by us and very often we can even set that value at a particular number. So, this is basically what is covered as forced convection. And then there are also situations where we are not applying any external flow, but the heat removal is taking place by an ambient air flow which is happening naturally. So, what happens when you have a flat plate that is just welded, you can place your hand slightly above the weldment and you can feel the hot air approaching your hand. And this shows you basically that as the air comes in contact with the hot weldment, it becomes hotter and the density of the air will then go down and you can see that it would then the air will move up by the action of gravity because lighter stuff will go up. And uh, in this manner, some amount of convection will be taking place uh, above the weldment and it will also aid in removal of heat. And all of this is happening naturally and this will be happening in different geometries the way we place the weldment in the geometrical uh, arrangement. So, uh, this kind of a removal of heat where we are not applying any uh, forced convection, but we are allowing the convective heat loss to take place uh, in a natural manner is called as a natural convection. Sometimes it is also referred to as a free convection. The correlations for Nusselt number will be different for these two regimes.
we will take the force convection. Uh, the force convection correlations for Nusselt number are given by uh, two different uh, uh, non-dimensional numbers. Uh, one non-dimensional number is Reynolds number where we have for example, non-dimensionalized the velocity of the uh, air or the gas medium. And uh, we have seen the way we have non-dimensionalized, we are uh, using the density, the viscosity, uh, dynamic viscosity and the length scale to convert the velocity into a non-dimensional number. And the other quantity which is used for the correlation is the, what is called as a Prandtl number. Prandtl number is nothing but a non-dimensionalized property of the material, it does not depend upon anything else. It is a ratio of basically uh, the kinematic viscosity of the particular fluid or the gas uh, to the thermal diffusivity of the gas. And this number will be fixed for a uh, given uh, gas medium at a given temperature and composition. And uh, uh, the Nusselt number correlations are available as function of these two uh, parameters and we can look them up in various handbooks and textbooks. Uh, as a, an example, I am just showing you here. Now, let us take uh, for example, a plate uh, that is held horizontally and is hot and air that is flowing on top of it is going to remove the heat and we are going to set the velocity of the air to be at a particular value. So, in such situations we can calculate what would be the Reynolds number and uh, we know what is the gas that is actually flowing. So, we can also estimate uh, from uh, property handbooks what would be the Prandtl number and we can substitute these two into the correlation that I have given you here uh, NUX is equal to 0 0.0296, Reynolds number raised to the power of 0.8 and Prandtl number raised to the power of uh, 1 by 3 and substituting that we get the Nusselt number and from Nusselt number we can then obtain the heat transfer coefficient. So, this is how one would normally go about estimating the heat transfer coefficient uh, for a plate geometry or similar geometries under forced convection regimes. And these correlations are available generally in most textbooks on uh, convective heat transfer and in handbooks. We will be going through a uh, set of such correlations in a tutorial later on which I will be uploading into the course website and we will also see how we can convert those expressions into the heat transfer coefficients through some illustrations. And uh, please pay attention to the range of the property uh, uh, parameters such as Prandtl number and Reynolds number for which these correlations are valid. Uh, we should not use them blindly in a regime where the validity is not there. Uh, if we do that, then we get erroneous values of the heat transfer coefficient. The Nusselt number correlations for natural convection are available as a correlation with the Rayleigh number and the Rayleigh number expression is given to you here. Uh, it has in the numerator g beta t minus t infinity into x cube and in the denominator alpha and nu. Alpha and nu are the same parameters that we have seen earlier namely thermal diffusivity and kinematic viscosity of the gas medium. Kinematic viscosity is nothing but the ratio of the dynamic viscosity mu what normally we refer to as viscosity and the uh, density of the particular medium. So, all these parameters are supposed to be taken for the fluid and not for the base material and uh, g is the acceleration due to gravity, beta is the thermal expansion coefficient. T is the temperature of the surface, T infinity is the ambient air temperature that is far away and X is the characteristic length scale. In the case of a plate, it would be the distance along the plate and in the case of a diameter of a uh, cylinder, you would uh, take D and so on. And I am uh, giving you an illustration here how it could be used. Uh, if you take a hot plate and uh, it is uh, held in such a way that uh, the heat is removed in the vertically upwards direction, then you can see the hot air is going to go upwards and uh, such a situation would uh, have the Nusselt number expression uh, averaged over the entire length of the plate L uh, given by NU L bar is equal to 0.54 into RA raised to the power of 0.25. And these are all basically averaged values for the entire length and then we can substitute the values for the G beta, T and T infinity and then the length L uh, cube and alpha and nu for the air medium and then obtain what will be the value of the Nusselt number. And then from Nusselt number we can obtain the value of the heat transfer coefficient and then that will tell us what is the uh, uh, efficiency with which the heat removal is happening by uh, namely the free convection or natural convection. Now, uh, it is possible that the hot plate which is containing the weldment may not be in the same geometry always. So, whether the hot surface is exposed to the top or to the bottom or side will definitely change the way heat is removed and therefore, these correlations also will be different. So, we must pay attention to the geometry apart from the range of these numbers for which the Nusselt number expressions are given and accordingly choose the expressions. If you do not pay attention to that, we may obtain erroneous results for the heat transfer coefficient.
uh, and the way to determine them uh, experimentally or empirically is also uh, possible. So, the way that we go about to determine the heat transfer coefficient is as follows. What we do is first we embed the thermocouples at different depths at the interface and uh, estimate what would be the uh, thermal uh, uh, history at each of those locations using a data acquisition system. And once we have the thermal history at a different depths, then we perform what is called as the inverse heat transfer analysis. What we mean by inverse heat transfer is to ask a question or for what kind of heat transfer coefficient do we expect this kind of a thermal profile. And naturally, you may uh, assume that uh, uh, this being an inverse problem, there will may be multiple values of heat transfer coefficient which may uh, give the same answer for the uh, thermal history. But then there are ways to find out what would be the reasonable range of the heat transfer coefficient or the heat fluxes and then uh, obtain the uh, parameters using the inverse heat transfer analysis which is a subject by itself. So, we will not be going to the depth in that particular topic, but we would say that yes there are methods to um, determine the heat transfer coefficient empirically in a given experimental situation. And therefore, we can say that we have ability to get either H or J experimentally or through uh, estimates using the correlations and uh, please remember those correlations are also made from other experiments that people have done. So, we have the values of H implies that we know how the heat loss is happening in the weldment. So, some precautions that we must take before I wind up I want to alert to you. Uh, we must always pay attention to the correlations and see for what kind of con, uh, uh, situations the correlations are actually estimated. And we also look at the welding to see what kind of situations the welding uh, process is experiencing. And unless there is a sufficient match between the two situations, these correlations may not be applicable. So, we must pay attention to the expressions and the origins from where those expressions have come and then only use them in the welding literature. And once we have done all the exercise and obtained the values of H, then we must inspect them. We must see that the numbers are not uh, odd. So, when they are reasonable and justified only we can use them. For example, uh, whenever we convert a conduction problem uh, into a heat transfer coefficient kind of an expression, we will get uh, several hundreds or thousands of uh, SI units of H which may be reasonable. And however, a pure uh, convection uh, using uh, free convection may give you a heat transfer in SI units of about 5 to 20. So, there are uh, values such as uh, these are that are uh, estimated by researchers and validated and we must have a look at the values we got and then compare and see whether we have the reasonable ones. And once we have these values, we must also see that minor changes in the experimental situation should not change these parameters uh, drastically. For example, let us say we increase the flow rate of the gas by 10 percent and the heat transfer coefficient jumps up by say 200 percent. So, such a thing is generally not possible. Uh, well, one may claim that in nanofluids, but uh, normally those are not used in uh, welding and therefore, we must see that small changes in the experimental parameters should uh, give a uh, very uh, reliable and robust uh, uh, expressions uh, without any drastic changes and such smoothness uh, should be also confirmed with the analytical expressions that govern such variations. And uh, whenever we use these correlations, we must also see that the average values are also appropriate and sufficient. So, once we have a grip on the heat transfer coefficient or the radiative heat loss, then we can say that we have a grip on the entire heat transfer uh, process uh, to remove the heat from the weldment from all the walls. And then we are ready to go into the thermal modeling of the uh, weldment itself, where we will be looking at a generalized Fourier heat conduction equation, its solutions, numerical, analytical, etcetera. So, that we will be covering in the next session. With that, we uh, come to the end of this lesson on the heat removal process.